Hey everyone, yesterday I went on a photo shoot with an amazing makeup artist in the Valley. We did kind of a personal branding shoot. I wanna share with you some of these images that I shot and talk a little bit about how I shot them. Let's do this. All right, so typically I shoot wedding photos, but every once in a while I'll collaborate with a business owner and we'll create some images for their branding. And in this situation, I got to work with Brooke Nicole. She's an incredible makeup artist out of Phoenix. We went down to the Salt River in Mesa and we ended up shooting a couple hours before sunset and then all the way through sunset. So I'll share some of these images with you guys and kind of talk through them. And of course, if you have any questions, be sure to post those below. So this first shot was, it was right at the beginning. And as I'm setting this up, you can tell I'm using a mag box to the right. You can see from the shadow that's kind of underneath her chin here, the sun was actually kind of back behind me towards the left. So it was giving her a little bit of fill light, but for the most part, my light is coming out of the mag box. Now behind her, the sky was just, I was not getting the rich colors, the blue there. And I really want to show that off. So in the next shot, you'll see that my sky, I underexposed it so I can see what it's gonna look like. And in these situations, guys, a lot of times I'll just flip my trigger off really quickly just to make sure I can get my sky where I want it and I don't get, you know, I have to worry about what my flash is looking like at the time. Then I'll turn it right back on again and I can get this next shot here. This is where basically I'm, I'm shooting, I'm, I'm balancing that flash with that blue sky. So again, if you guys want to really bring out the sky, the color in your skies, you have to underexpose it many times and then put a flash on your subject. So right here, I'm using the mag box to the right, and I'll show you about four or five images with this exact same lighting setup. And this next shot here, it's again, one light. My sun's coming from the left. It's actually giving her just an edge of rim light on her hair there. But the way my mag box is positioned, it's to the right of her just a little bit, about 45 degrees. And you can see what, what I'm looking for here is, you see that triangle right underneath the face? That's what we call Rembrandt light. Rembrandt light is one of the most popular kind of portrait style of lighting. Now what's nice about using the mag box is it's a big enough light source to actually get that beautiful wrapping light and create that triangle. And this shot again, my sun is to my left, my mag box to my right, and I have Brooke looking straight at me. So I call this my Wonder Woman pose. It actually comes from a great book. I think it, her name is Amy Cuddy and the book is called Presence. And she talks about body language. And so when I am posing with models, a lot of times I'll look for a different body language that portrays a certain message. All right, so this next shot, I actually was kind of going for something a little bit fun. I pulled out a kind of a gimmicky lens. It's a, a lens baby lens. It's one that's been sitting collecting dust for literally years in my office. And I pulled it out and I said, you know, I'm gonna have some fun with this one. And that's what you can see kind of the blur on the edges. It's just the lens baby lens. But what's unique about this shot is I'm using lens baby with a flash. And so the flash again is to my right. I'm having Brooke look towards it and it's creating just a small shadow right underneath her nose. And that's called Paramount or Butterfly Light. And the shadow does not extend down in the lips. That's the one thing you wanna be careful of when you create this is make sure it doesn't extend to the lips. And the way you avoid that is just not having that light be too high. All right, this next shot I wanna show you is basically this is again the setup shot. So we had Brooke sitting on the, on the rock here and she's looking at the camera. I shoot it with no flash, underexpose it. We can see the sun's behind her creating that incredible rim light on her hair. And this one, when I have her look towards the light, we're creating what's called a little tiny loop light just coming off the shadow of their nose there. And I'm shooting from what's called the short side of the face. So I'm shooting from the shadow side of the face and we're using again that sun as my rim light. I love this very dynamic, very strong image of Brooke. So as we're going to our next location, one of the things you wanna be careful of is not to, you know, get caught up in doing photographs in one way. So you don't wanna just use your flash on every single shot or shoot natural light on every single shot. I like to try to mix it up as much as I can. So in this situation, as we're walking, I just got ahead of Brooke and I said, hey Brooke, come walking towards me. And as you do, I'm gonna take some photographs. And this is just all naturally lit. Uh, you can see it's a, a completely different look and some of you might even like this better. I, I certainly love this shot. It's just one of those things where you wanna mix it up a lot and make sure you give your clients lots of options. So this is all naturally lit. This next shot, I was looking for a kind of a balance between the, um, the ambient and the sun. I didn't want it to make it look too obvious that I was using flash. And so what I'm doing here is I'm shooting with lower flash powers. If you notice the hair, that's all being lit by the, the sun. So I kind of have a cross light set up, my mag box to the right and then cross from my mag box is the sun highlighting her in the back, giving her that nice rim light. Again, we're down by the river. I'm making sure that the horizon is not going through her neck. So one other thing I really like about this is when I'm using a mag box, I can create these really cool catch lights in the eye. So in this shot here, if you look close, what really makes it pop is to me, it's those little catch lights, the little bright dots in the eye. It basically makes those eyes come alive where if it was just naturally lit, one, the background would be a lot lighter and two, you wouldn't see those little bright spots in the eyes that make those eyes really pop. So this next shot, 
I move the Mac box over a little bit more to the side. It's on her left. This is what we call split lighting. Now split lighting, typically I'll use it with guys. It's a little bit rougher light. But in this situation, I told her, I said, just look straight at the camera. I'm gonna have that light hitting you up from the side, kind of have a shadow side of the face. Now one thing you can do though is with the mag box, if you move it just a tiny bit closer to the camera, just a little bit, you can get that edge of light just lighting up the eye as well. I didn't do any editing to bring any of the highlights into the eye, but you can see there's just a little bit of light hitting her right eye, which is the camera left there. And it just makes that eye pop a little bit. In fact, you can even notice a catch light in that eye. So in this next shot, I had Brooke look towards the mag box. So first she's looking at the camera, now she's looking towards it. And when she does that, we're getting a totally different light. As you can see here, I'm getting that loop shadow coming off the nose. So that's why we call this loop light. It's basically just a small shadow coming right off the side of the nose. I love this kind of shot where we get light again from both sides, a cross light. Sun behind her, mag box in front of her, catch lights in the eyes. It's just absolutely beautiful. And it's something you can't really do with that natural life. If I'm only shooting ambient light photos, I'm not gonna be able to get that dimension like I'm getting here. So on this next shot, you can actually see I turn my flashes off just to show you what it looks like with no flash. It, you can still see that sunlight hitting her hair in the background, but you can see without a flash, it's dark. Now I could certainly lighten this up. I could certainly uh, shoot this more ambient light. But again, when I do that, I'm gonna start blowing out that background behind her. It's gonna get super bright. So on this next shot, I use the, the double rainbow setup. If you've seen any of our videos previously, you've surely seen this setup. It's basically just having two lights, one to my left, one to my right. Now what makes this unique though, is I had my, my flash to my left about double the power as the one on the right. And I do that just to create more dimension so it's not equal lighting setups. So you can see that light on the left is, is definitely more powerful or more bright than the one on the right. So now we actually started walking down to this area. I wanted to be able to, there's a, a place called Red Mountain and it's this beautiful uh, mountain structure in the background right along the Salt River. And I wanna be able to capture that in the photographs. But the issue was that as we walked to get there, that sun was setting down and we just weren't able to get there just in time. It just barely missed it. And so as I got to the river, I thought, you know what, that sun set right on the saddle. Let's create our own sun. So this is where I pulled the mag beam out. I use the full CTO inside the mag beam and I use the telephoto lens inside the mag beam and I extend it all the way out. And I basically put it exactly where I saw that sun set, right in that saddle. And I had uh, Brooke stand there and we created our own sun. Now what's fun about these types of setups, guys, is when you create your own sun, it all depends on where you position your lens relative to where that light's hitting. I'm gonna show you just three images here. I don't know which one's my favorite. I actually kind of like them all. This one, you can see that that sun, the mag beam, is just over her left shoulder. So I'm getting just an edge of the mag beam coming into the frame. If you look at this next one, I actually moved just a little bit. I didn't move the light, I just moved my body so that now the mag beam is right behind Brooke and we're getting just kind of that rim light and then this last one here, I actually moved even a little bit further to the side. And now you can see the mag beam coming out over her left shoulder on the right side of the camera. To me, it looks exactly how the sun looked as it was setting as we were trying to get into our spot to take these photographs. So this is just something to keep in mind. Combine two types of light modifiers together. I'm using the mag box here, camera left, and I'm using the mag beam behind her with a full CTO to create that sun. As we're getting close to wrapping this shoot up, again, the sun's gone down, but I thought, you know, Brooke, I wanna do a couple more ambient light, natural light shots. So I got really low down to the river. We shot this beautiful shot of Brooke. I had the mag box already set up. So I actually just put it behind her, just off camera right, out of the frame. And you can see it's actually just giving her a nice rim light. That rim light basically helps separate her from the background. I think it's one of the most underused lights in all of photography is using a rim light. And I could have used anything. I could have used a mag grid, a mag snoot, but at this time, because my mag box was already set up, I just put it behind her and I got this beautiful light. And then lastly, to wrap it up, before we pack everything up, let's just do two more shots. Basically what I'm doing here is I want to, I want to create totally different looks. One where we have orange sky and the other one where we have blue sky. So this first one, in order to get an orange sky, I just pop in a CTB gel into the mag box, which I absolutely love. It's so easy. Aaron, zoom in, it's so easy. <laughs> Put the mag box nice and close to her. That's all I use, just that one light with the gel in it. And then I go in my camera and I say, hey camera, go all the way to 10,000 Kelvin. Now guys, I actually had to go into Lightroom and push it even further. I had to do some tweaks and, and make my, my scale go all the way up. I think I was like a 25,000 Kelvin or something crazy like that. When I do that, I get this beautiful warm sky and the skin tones on her look fantastic. So I love doing things like this. And then I just reversed it. Literally within seconds, I say, all right, Brooke, stay right there. 
I go over, I grab the, the blue gel out, I put the orange gel in, and now I'm putting orange light on Brooks. So what do I need to do? I need to take my Kelvin and go all the way down to about 2,500, 2,700, somewhere in that range. And you're gonna get this incredible cool blue sky, cool water, and the, the skin tones on her look fantastic. All right guys, so that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this behind the scenes footage and, and me talking about how I shot the images. If you guys are enjoying these videos, be sure to let us know. Post in the comments below or in the MagMod community. Let us know what you like about them. Also, be sure to subscribe and like the video. That always helps as well. All right guys, we'll catch you on the next video.